Great, thank you. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Josh. I'm part of the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, uh, or as you may hear it referred to sometimes, the LEP, the Lead City Region Enterprise Partnership. Um, I'll go over kind of what that is and, and what those organisations do in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, but like Chris said, the kind of purpose of me being here today to talk to you guys is really to give you an insight into you know, Leeds City Region um, and West Yorkshire as a whole, uh, why it's a great place to, to study and why it's a great place to stay after you've studied as well. I can see from the poll that we've done, uh, about half of you here are students and about half of you are graduates. Um, so I think there'll be a little bit of everything for those who are, you know, maybe at the beginning of their journey in Leeds and want to find out more about the city and the economic region, or those who have, you know, graduated and are thinking about what their next steps might be uh just try to get, okay cool um hopefully everyone can see my face on the next slide um so yeah i'm a business partnership advisor in the employment and skills team in the west yorkshire combined authority um what i do day to day is help businesses connect with our different education institutions in the region so that might be universities colleges or even secondary schools the reason I do that is to help them access um, the amazing talent that we've got at those institutions. So that might be taking people on placement years, it might be offering internships, might be working with course leaders to consult on curriculum changes. It's really varied, you know, it's a lot of fun working with the different businesses that we have inside our region. And hopefully throughout this presentation, we'll be able to talk a little bit about those different businesses and the different sectors they work in as well. Um, I'm a graduate of University of Leeds, so I graduated about seven years ago now. Um, I did a English language and literature degree. Um, some of you here might, may, may have done the same or may be doing the same. Um, I have a lot of colleagues that, that work in the combined authority with me who um, studied at University of Leeds and Leeds Beckett and Trinity and some of the other universities in West Yorkshire. Some of them did English degrees as well. Some of them did, you know, various other things. I think one of the things to get across really is that none of us have ever felt really constricted by the, the topic we did for as our degree. And, you know, some of my job really closely relates to English language and literature when I'm writing proposals and reports and policy documents. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff I do that isn't directly related to my degree as well. So hopefully you guys will kind of get an idea of the, the skills you have and how they might transfer into a job um, in the Leeds area. So the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, um, what we are, are basically a collection um, of different local authority areas. So that obviously covers Leeds, which will be familiar to a lot of you guys, but also Bradford, Calderdale, Kirklees and Wakefield, which may or may not be areas that you've explored in West Yorkshire during your time here so far. Um, it's the UK's largest economic area outside London, about 3.1 million people there. Um, so you can kind of see the scale that we're operating at and, and the amount of people that we're responsible for over that geographic area. Um, the local enterprise partnership, so Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership, um, works closely with the combined authority. And in fact, some of us who work there are employed by both the combined authority and the enterprise partnership. Uh, and what we do in the enterprise partnership specifically is focus on building West Yorkshire into a strong, successful economy, making sure our national interests and international interests are, you know, at the heart of what we do and ultimately make it a great place for everyone to live, build businesses and to work as well. Um, and you'll hear a lot when we talk about economic growth, about the importance of clean growth. So that is growth that doesn't harm the environment and growth that is sustainable and inclusive growth so growth that includes everyone in the region you know not just the people at the top you know it, the, the the economic benefits of the region need to be felt by everyone that lives in west yorkshire so a little bit on our economy there's a nice little map there that kind of shows you our transport links um kind of you know nationally uh, by rail and um by air as well. So we're very well connected in this region and that is obviously to our advantage in terms of our links to London, uh, but also Manchester, Birmingham and up north in Edinburgh as well. Um, 70 billion pounds gross value added, which makes us the largest city region economy outside London in the Southeast. Um, we've got about 7 million people outside the region who live within one hour's drive. 
and a really large working age population of 1.9 million. And then that bit at the bottom, 126,000 businesses. So we have a lot of you know, major international focused businesses um, that operate within our region and they're headquartered within our region. But a large number of the businesses in our region are what we would call small medium enterprises. So businesses that have under 250 employees or turnover less than uh, 50 million pounds a year. And those businesses are really the, the backbone of our economy, those small businesses. So it's important to remember we're not just you know, talking about those large international businesses when we talk about our regional economy. It's also about the SMEs and the amazing work that, that they do to, to kind of keep our region going and keep our economy afloat as well. Um, the talent, oops, sorry. Talent we have in the region. Uh, so we've got nine universities across West Yorkshire. I'll go into that in the next slide a little bit. 116,000 students. So if you can imagine, you know, that's a lot of people who are looking, potentially looking for work in the region, which is great news for all of our employers who are constantly asking for new and fresh talent. 56% um, of the graduates who study here stay in Leeds City Region, which is a very high percentage. And when you start looking into some of the specific institutions like University of Bradford, that is an even higher percentage. Um, and 70% of our graduates who, you know, maybe grew up here, went to study somewhere else like Manchester, Liverpool, down in London, end up returning to the city region as well. So a really healthy economy when it comes to skills and talent um, and, you know, a lot of people with great skills who are contributing fantastically to that economic growth. Um, our business schools as well, I should mention, you know, we've got Leeds Business School, University of Leeds. Um, I know Beckett have an amazing business school and, and Bradford School of Management, um, all really high regarded. Um, they, they frequently make the kind of top 10 lists of business schools in the world. So, again, some fantastic institutions and some fantastic talent in the region. Um, apologies for that green line, by the way. I don't really know why that's up there, but um, apologies if it's distracting you. Um, student numbers, you can see, you know, University of Leeds kind of tops it out in terms of almost 32,000 students. But it's important to remember that, you know, we've got fantastic institutions in this um, in this locality and that the student numbers are, are really high. And we've got also our specialist um, institutions like the Conservatoire and the Arts University. Um, that are contributing really high student numbers as well. So again, a fantastic place for businesses to invest because of how much kind of graduate talent and, and skilled talent we have coming through the region, um, which works very much to our advantage. Um, can see here a list of some of the companies that operate uh, in the area. Channel 4, a lot of you will have kind of heard about their relocation up here and they're kind of in the majestic building uh, in the centre of town right by the station. So I'm sure a lot of you will have seen them coming into Leeds. Sky Betting and Gaming have a really big site here. Uh, anyone who's into kind of sports streaming, uh, DAZN, you may have heard of them. I know they stream a lot of the Kind of UFC and, and uh, boxing stuff. So they're headquartered up here. Asda, of course, as well. Uh, we've had Rockstar Games, Burberry, KPMG, PwC. So yeah, that's a good example of some of the really large companies that are headquartered up here and, and that are always looking to engage with new talent and fill positions. But like I said, the backbone of our economy in a lot of ways is those smaller businesses as well. So these might be the ones kind of grabbing the headlines on an international level, but that's not to say that our SMEs aren't doing a lot of work, both nationally and internationally, in some really interesting areas. I'll talk a little bit about our key sectors as well. So business and professional services. Uh, you might have heard West Yorkshire referred to as the UK's second financial centre. Um, We've got the UK Infrastructure Bank, the Bank of England and the Financial Conduct Authority creating a lot of jobs up here in the next few years. Um, 332,000 people employed in this sector. The big four firms, so a lot of you will have heard of PwC, uh, EY, KPMG and Deloitte. They all have uh, headquarters up here um, in some form. Really big insurance sector. Um, and basically, yeah, a, a real strength of our economy when it comes to business and professional services. And I would say these, these firms, especially the big four, are always looking to engage with graduate talent. So those of you that have graduated, you know, look out for graduate schemes coming up. And those of you that haven't graduated yet, 
these firms are, are always kind of around the university recruitment fairs, so definitely worth a chat with them about the um, offers that they have. Um, digital, of course, is getting a lot bigger and, and kind of growing every day as a sector for us. We're really proud. We have almost 9,000 digital tech businesses here employing over 50,000 people. Uh, and those are, you know, micro businesses all the way up to massive kind of hundreds to, you know, multiple hundred people organizations. We've got the Leeds Digital Festival that we host here every year that you may have seen some activity around recently. Uh, a real focus at the moment on data analysis, analysis, software development. You know, those are key skills that, that employers are always looking for when it comes to digital. So anyone that's got a background in that or, you know, is looking to get a background in that, we'll speak a little bit later about kind of some of the training options that might be available to you after you've finished studying. Um, really good tech communities as well. There's a really nice feel when it comes to kind of sharing best practice and sharing talent around the region. Um, and those of you that go on to be employed in digital, I'm sure you'll end up seeing a lot of familiar faces as you navigate the industry. Um, and identified as the second best location in the world to launch an AI operation in financial services, which is obviously very, very good. Um, scale ups so 341 scale ups for those of you that don't know a scale up is kind of um closely related to uh university and and businesses that have maybe been born out of academic practice that have you know just wanted to scale up quite quickly so we're a really good place for for that to happen for you know various different companies that want to do that fast growth um, the creative industry in our region um, has really been boosted by Channel 4 moving into the region. But, you know, even if you take out Channel 4, we've got people like ITV up here. We have BBC presence. Uh, one of the big focuses for our region at the moment is getting kind of people skilled up on camera operation. Um, and that's a, a really big kind of skills need for a lot of companies as production moves up here. We've got a fantastic site over in Wakefield called Production Park, which hosts 20 live event businesses, massive studios um, and a big kind of student base as well. They offer specialist degrees in stuff like stage management, live events production. They also run a lot of apprenticeships out of that site. We've had Beyonce, Muse, Coldplay. Um, I think Ed Sheeran was kind of practicing for his tour there. So a really amazing site and um, I'd highly encourage anyone to to kind of make use of the open days that they have down there because it's really fantastic to see the work they do. The games industry is um, massive in 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 uh, West Yorkshire and, and only getting bigger and again that those kind of development roles are really something that the companies are looking for to fill talent gaps at the moment um, and we've got stuff like the Creative Catalyst Fund which um, kind of was set up to help fund indie TV and film development. So we're really keen not to just kind of focus on those big hitters in the industry. We know that we've got some amazing smaller companies that do a lot of this production work and we wanna give them the, the skills and the money to be able to kind of go forward and deliver some really great stuff. Uh, healthcare and life sciences, you might have heard some speak some people talking um, about this as a key sector in our region as well. Um, We've got a load of what we would call med tech companies operating in the region, 250. There's 600 life sciences companies and 62 digital health enterprises. Of course, a lot of that is down to the fact that our institutions, you know, like the universities have amazing facilities. I'm thinking particularly of those at Bradford and Uni of Leeds. Um, and those are really conducive to kind of health and life science research um, and giving firms the kind of research data but also the premises to be able to do what they need and, and push kind of that thing forward in really innovative ways um, obviously the hospitals in NHS England are a massive employer in that area um, NHS digital have a really large base up here as well uh, so that's 196,000 people across our region employed in health and science roles in some way and something we're really proud of um, some of my colleagues in the region work in what's called our trade and investment team. So they are kind of responsible for seeking firms who wanna invest in our region or working with um, other regions across the world um, to kind of give them best practice on our strength. They do a lot of work on healthcare and life sciences. They recently led a delegation in Texas. They've done some work in India as well. 
all around why our region is so good on healthcare and life sciences. So definitely something we're internationally recognized for. Um, advanced manufacturing, um, yeah, seven billion pounds generated a year through our manufacturing businesses. Uh, we've got the largest manufacturing base in the UK. Again, a lot of those are, are kind of smaller organizations. You may have heard of Progimax in Bradford. They're not the biggest organization, but the work they do is incredible when it comes to kind of satellite technology. They're leading our new space hub as well. And they're one of our kind of success stories that we're really proud of in the region in terms of the, the kind of jobs they're able to do and the scale they're able to operate at given their size and, and ethos as a business. Um, and again, you know, the fact that we have so many great institutions around uh, when it comes to education and, and resource and development for manufacturing is a massive bonus for, for us as well and helps these firms kind of grow. Um, moving on to just kind of general stuff, uh, you know, you might already know some of this stuff already, but our region is regularly voted among the happiest and best places to live in the UK. We've got amazing culture, we've got a fantastic hospitality industry, um, you know, Leeds City Centre is packed out pretty much every weekend with people coming here from around the north and around the country to um, shop and, you know, eat and drink. Um, and we're really proud of, 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 you know, what our region has to offer for, for people that live here beyond kind of the, the economic benefits as well. Um, obviously, we just had pride month or we're still in pride month and and i know we've got our celebration in leeds city center next month um around pride um and ultimately what we want is for leeds to be kind of a, a safe and welcoming place for everyone and for everyone to feel comfortable um in their own skin and in their own identity um more people age 20 age under 20 than anywhere else in the north uh, that is particularly uh, apparent in bradford i think bradford has one of the youngest populations in, in the whole of the UK. Um, very ethnically diverse, um, 170 ethnic groups with over 104 languages spoken. Again, that's something we're really proud of, our diverse communities, and we wanna support those communities and, and again, make sure that they, they have what they need to, to continue thriving. Um, you may have heard recently about the City of Culture bid in Bradford for 2025 and, and their success in that. So we're really excited that Bradford will be the uh, UK City of Culture in 2025 and really excited to celebrate, you know, the different things that go on in Bradford, the incredibly diverse communities that we have in Bradford um, and really kind of develop some long lasting programs and some long lasting artworks that will celebrate um, that town. Um, and yeah, what I mentioned earlier about Pride, so 100, top 100 cities in the world for LGBTQ plus community. Um, this picture was taken, it would have been a few years ago now, um, at the Pride event. Um, but like I said, that will be running again in August. And we're really happy that, you know, all of our institutions in, in the area are, are massively supportive of that. So I'm going to talk a little bit now that that first 20 minutes was just kind of an introduction to the region you know what our strengths are economically um why it's a good place to study why it's a good place to stay after you've studied and why you know so many businesses choose to to set up here um i'm going to talk a little bit now for the next 15 20 minutes or so about support that's available for you guys through the combined authority and through the lep and some of our partners um so that's some of this support is for you guys who are current students. You can access that right now. Some of it would be more kind of appropriate for those of you that have graduated or perhaps are about to graduate in the next few months. Um, so what I'll do, I'll make sure these slides are sent around afterwards. If you do have any questions about anything we've gone through um, in that first 20 minutes or anything we're gonna go through in this next 20 minutes, please do just put them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'll probably do like a roundup of the questions at the end, but just put them in the chat and we'll go through them. So what support is available and how can I access it? I'd say the the kind of the biggest one that, that's relevant for you guys at the moment. Oops, sorry, I managed to uh, skip through slides there. The one I'd talk about um, that, that's kind of the most relevant for you guys at the moment is your, your university careers hubs. Some of you you know, might be aware that the um, the careers teams at university are, are open for you to access whilst you're a student and a lot of them after you've graduated as well. 
and our team specifically the team that i work in in the lab is always working closely with those careers teams and with subjects leads to help bring businesses into universities and to speak to you guys about employability skills and um you know career paths and what's available to you um so you know examples of this we've run careers panels with the university of leeds um focusing on the future of working practices and skills for the future of work we've developed a series of videos for students at leeds beckett with employers and employees talking about their career paths um, and we've done mentoring sessions fed into those with leeds trinity all of our other institutions we've done internships work experience placements interview practice sessions but I would say the the university careers teams are a fantastic resource and I'd highly encourage you guys to engage uh, with your university of careers teams and the events they put on for you guys year round. The best way to find out about getting a job and, and what you need to get a job after you've left university is to talk to those people that are hiring for those jobs. So those companies that work in our area, I think people will always say to you, you know, networking is kind of one of the best things you can do to, to kind of kickstart your career. So I'd really encourage you, even while you're still studying, to be taking full advantage of those events um, and, you know, making sure you're connecting with employers through your university careers teams and take advantage of the stuff like CV workshops, uh, interview practice kind of sessions that your careers teams put on as well because you know massively beneficial to get ahead while you still can um, or, or kind of get started it's never too late to to get started on those things um just a little bit of insight into our small medium enterprise community so smes so that's businesses that are under 250 people and or have under 50 million pounds turnover make up 99 percent of the businesses in the Leeds city region and in west yorkshire we've got some amazing smes that do really innovative stuff i mentioned Produmax earlier their work on the space hub in yorkshire um we've got a um a company called sticks and glass who are really at the forefront of uh, filming technology and, and post-production technology. Um, Dale Tech do a lot of really interesting manufacturing work. AgriSound um, have got an amazing thing that they're developing around sustainability and beehives. Um, and Journey Further, one of the examples of one of our, you know, marketing and PR agencies of which there's thousands and thousands across West Yorkshire. Um, I would encourage you guys to to really be thinking about you know what type of environment you want to work in I know when I left university I didn't really want to work for a, a large kind of corporate organization for for a lot of different reasons and I know a lot of people kind of feel the same and I'd encourage you guys to think okay if I don't want to work for a larger organization or if I'm not sure what are the benefits that working for a smaller organization could bring um those the environments you're usually working in when it's a smaller organization will be fast paced because you know the team numbers will be less you might be asked to do a lot of different interesting things very quickly and, and really boost your your skill set quickly so within that there's massive opportunities for quick career progression um a lot of the times we hear companies coming to us and saying you know we want people with great communication skills who can work well as a team who you know can can innovate the way they work and the way they think you guys will will have all of that as graduates of, of a university um in the leeds area you know you'll have used communication uh you know you you'll be able to show digital skills you'll be able to show how you've worked in a team on group projects or you know essay writing when it comes to communicating your thoughts on a subject so you know you you have that skill set already there through your studies the important thing is to try and bolster that wherever possible with a bit of work experience that could even be you know something really short term a week or two could be something longer if you're lucky enough to have a placement year as part of your degree but i think the main message from me would be think about what you've already got through your degree think about what you enjoy doing and kind of think about how you can bolster that a little bit with some real world experience as well um wherever possible um i can see a question in the chat which might be interesting here okay cool so question in the chat reads i've graduated from leeds university business school on march 22nd been looking for opportunities for a while um focusing on entry-level jobs with less expertise or experience 
um, entry level or early graduates still demand extensive experience, which I do not have. Could you advise on any message, measures I could take to address this issue, which will ultimately secure a job for me? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a situation that a lot of people will find themselves in sometimes where, you know, the, the, the people want experience even for entry level roles, which can be hard to get if, if no one's giving you the, the entry level roles in the first place. I would say it, you know, think about the areas you want to work in when it comes to industries and maybe send out a few emails to companies working in that space, seeing if they would be willing to offer, you know, short term work experience for a week or two, if that's just kind of shadowing someone. A conversation over the phone with a hiring manager is always good. And I think it's always good if there is a job that you've identified to have a conversation with the person named on the job advert um, and even say to them, look, I don't have massive amounts of experience in this area, but these are the things I learned during my degree. And this is how I'm willing to kind of prove myself to you. Like I said at the start, a lot of kind of finding a job and, and retaining a job is about networking. So the more you can do to kind of bridge that gap and get to know people personally and, and show that initiative, I think the better it is. So I'd really encourage you to reach out to hiring managers on job adverts, you know, have a conversation over the phone with them, send out some emails to people, maybe some LinkedIn messages asking if you can shadow people or have a chat with them about their career. Um, and, and yeah, try and gain a little bit of experience that way um, instead of just kind of going in blind with the with the application um next slide okay cool so our future goals platform is something that we run through the let um it's a dedicated all ages careers platform um what we try and do through that is kind of inspire people about careers so maybe if they've not considered a career in manufacturing or a career in creative production give them information and inspiration to kind of pursue that and also to empower people through training um, and resources as well. On the Future Goals website, we've got something called the Next Steps Toolkit, um, which has a lot of stuff in there about CV writing and interview tips and also helps you kind of map your own skills as well. Would highly encourage anyone to kind of engage with that toolkit and think about, you know, how your CV is put together, what kind of things you're talking about in interviews or might be expected of you in interviews. I know interviews are kind of really scary when you've never done one before and often even when you have done them before and the best way for them to be less scary is through practice. So anything you can do to kind of, kind of uh, know what's coming up when it comes to an interview, um, I think is a bonus. So would highly encourage everyone to go on the Future Goals website um, and download that Next Steps Toolkit. Um, free adult training courses and resources i'll speak about them in a little bit but um we do offer a lot of different training modules um quite a lot of them are led by employer need as well so an employer will come to us and say look we need x uh number of software designers or or developers in the next year can you put on a course for people in the area so that we can you know know we have the talent uh those courses are free and i'll talk a little bit about how you can access them uh, towards the end of the presentation. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll talk about them now. Um, so Skills Connect is our kind of our portal for free adult training courses. Um, I think at the moment we're just developing and finishing off some of our courses, but I know there's a load of courses that are due to go live in August and September. All of our Skills Connect courses are free and all of them are designed in some way with local employers in mind, whether that's employers coming directly to us saying they have a need for vacancies or employers kind of forecasting that in the next few years they will have a need for vacancies so we're really keen to get people into work once they've done these courses it's not the type of thing we want you to do and then just kind of forget about and and lose it all as soon as you've learned it the outcome that we want is for people that have done these courses to to get into kind of careers and we'll do what we can to support you on that journey a lot of our courses do focus on digital skills, um, but we also have a lot around engineering and manufacturing and obviously health and social care as well. So if, if you take anything away from, from this today, if you're struggling for work or if you feel like you need a bit more on your skill set, go to the Future Goals Skills Connect website after this, um, bookmark it, check it every couple of weeks for courses that are coming up um, and see you know if there's anything on there that you think actually 
that that could be a, a career that that I want to pursue. It doesn't have to be something you studied in the past. So if you are, you know, like me, an English graduate, and you think actually I want a career in digital marketing, but I've not really been able to to do anything on that so far because of my degree. You don't need any background knowledge. They're just, you know, it, there's a couple of kind of screening questions before, but you, you don't need any prior knowledge when it comes to these courses. So please do take full advantage of them because they're there, they're fully funded and, and we want people to be going into, um, you know, job roles that are exciting for them and, and that are meaningful for them. So please do take full advantage if you're recently graduated or if you're about to graduate. In a similar vein, there's a, you may or may not have heard of the employment hubs um, around West Yorkshire. The employment hubs work really closely with people one to one to give them support to boost their employability prospects and find work in the region. So if you are currently looking for work, if you're out of work and recently graduated, I would highly encourage you to Google the employment hub in your area. Probably that will be the Leeds employment hub but they'll work really close with you on a one-to-one -one basis to look at your CV, look at job applications, um, work with you on interview practice sessions, connect you with local employers to hear what they need from people uh, and, and make sure your CV is kind of tailored to that um, and ultimately help you find work as well. You can access employment hub support if you are still studying. So if you're coming to the end of your you know master's degree or or a degree that has um, the graduation time has been set back a bit you don't have to wait until you graduate to start contacting the employment hub you can contact them from now again if you are struggling for employment um if you're looking for tips on how to get a job the employment hub is one of the first places i'd go so highly encourage you again i'll send this presentation around afterwards and you can click that link but if you Google employment hub leads, you can start kind of setting up uh, conversations with them to, to get assistance. Again, that support is all free. Um, so you won't be charged for, for any of that. So definitely recommend taking full advantage. Um, some of you may or may not be aware of the graduate route visa as well. Um, that's for people who have, uh, you know, are, are international residents, but have come to the UK to study either you know full four-year program here or maybe a master's program um, the graduate route visa allows the holder to stay in the uk for up to two years following completion of their study so you don't need a company to sponsor you to to stay here you can stay here for a while under the graduate route visa uh, which hopefully takes the pressure off a little bit of kind of feeling like you need to find employment uh, or or you know you'll have to vacate leads uh, you don't need it to be tied to a specific job. So if you did get a job under the graduate route visa and then you changed jobs, you wouldn't have to reapply for a new one. Um, and it's just a nice way of giving yourself a little bit of um, a barrier and a little bit of safety, um, you know, once you've graduated in terms of looking for a role here, if you know you do want to stay in the Leeds area. And, and hopefully through this presentation, you've kind of seen the, the benefits of that. Um, there are costs associated with the visa, and I'll say now I'm not an expert in the visa in any way. There's a government website link there. So again, once I send this round, highly encourage any of you to, to just check that out and, and see what the visa entails and what the costs entail, um, and potentially speak with your careers team at the university, though I'm aware they may not be experts as well, but it's definitely worth getting familiar with the concept of it at least. So you know, once you've finished your studies, you don't feel like you have to leave Leeds straight away. There is that option to stay, even if you don't have employment uh, lined up straight away. Um, might be some of you in this in this session who have done a degree through one of our business schools or, or management schools, or, you know, just a, a degree at any one of our institutions and are thinking about starting your own company. Um, we're really keen to, to provide you guys with the tools to be able to do that. We've got a new program called Enterprise West Yorkshire, which focuses on giving people those skills, um, kind of practical skills uh, to, in terms of setting up their own business. So again, access the support that's there. These workshops are free. Even if you've not really got a business idea yet, you don't need to come with us with to come to us with a few full business plan or business proposal. These workshops are designed to help you kind of figure out what that might look like. So even if you've got a vague idea of, I think I want to do X, I think I want to set up as a freelancer, I think I want to offer my services as a copywriter, and that would involve setting up my own company, but I'm not really sure how. 
get involved with Enterprise West Yorkshire and, and explore those workshops that are on offer to you because again it's it's free it's designed to to help people in the region that want to do this kind of thing so please do take full advantage um that's pretty much it and like i said i'll, I'll send this round afterwards um and and give you guys kind of an idea hopefully it's given you guys an idea of what's on offer um i can see there is a few questions in the chat so Okay, thanks, Ikra, in terms of international student office for info and support regarding visa. Yeah, definitely, they're the experts, so please do talk to them um, if that's something you want to pursue. Um, okay, so we'll go from the top down. So PhD in sociology and social policy, please share organizations that hire researchers, social scientists. Well, Pfizer, it's funny you mention that because we have a very big policy team in the combined authority. Um, and I will send you a link. I'll put a link in the chat um, after this, or, or I'll include a link to our vacancies page when I do the email after. But we have a lot of jobs in policy, um, kind of project leads, project officers around new developments, civic developments in the city. And, and obviously a lot of that kind of incorporates sociology. So would be good, I think, for, for you to take a look at those. It probably lines up quite nicely with, with what you would like to do uh, following your PhD. Um, got a question around the Skills Connect course. Yes, so for Skills Connect, as part of their screening process, you do have to, pr you do have to give an address for West Yorkshire. So that can obviously be your student residence address. Like if, you, if you're if you here during term time and you live in a student house or in student halls, you can give that address, that's fine. Uh, but if you're not able to provide a, um, a an address in West Yorkshire, then yeah, unfortunately you won't be able to get on the course. I would say if you're kind of between housing at the moment, like if you have recently graduated and you're not sure whether you will have an address in Leeds in September when the course starts, put in an expression of interest form on the website and talk to the person running the course because they'll be able to advise you and on you know what what you might be able to do in terms of accessing that support um okay kirsty ma degree in graphic design i'd like to find a job in creative industries if possible all my previous work experiences are relevant could you please give me advice on how to kickstart yeah i think it's a bit similar to the question that we had before um, first of all, I will say that Tom has signposted to a session on Thursday on creative industries in Leeds. So definitely take full advantage of that session because they'll be able to give you some really good advice there. I would say reach out to people on LinkedIn where possible who are working in the area. We have a lot of kind of creative industry um, professionals here, a lot of uh, design companies, a lot of kind of marketing agencies. And I'm sure a lot of those people would be really happy to chat with you about, you know, how they kickstarted their career. It would be worth looking for grad schemes um, if you haven't already. Um, so that I know a lot of those don't particularly ask for, um, they don't ask for prior experience. It depends what you're looking to do in creative industries, because I know a lot of our Skills Connect courses are looking at things like um, filming, you know, post-production, that kind of thing. If that isn't of interest to you, I definitely recommend looking at Skills Connect, the courses they offer, the experience they can give and the employment prospects but at the end of it. But similarly, I'd encourage you to start engaging like on LinkedIn or, or just kind of phone calls with hiring managers on jobs and just say, you know, this is the position I'm in. This is the skills I have from my degree how can we work together to kind of get me through the door so i can start showing you my skills um and and you for you to be able to take a chance on me that would be what what i would suggest for that but definitely go to that session on on tuesday uh, thursday sorry between one and two um because i think there'll be some really solid advice there um big challenge for international students so this is a new question is that even if they have relevant skills have the graduate route visa to sponsor themselves employers are either very hesitant to hire the international or do not have enough knowledge about the route we'd we'll be able to share how the lep is yeah how we're working with employers to bridge this knowledge gap yeah it's a really good question and something we're really trying to do um with specifically our larger employers in the area so we've worked with a couple of large employers 
to run dedicated recruitment events for them um, for graduates for when they're looking to hire large numbers of graduates in the area um, something we do with them before every one of those is have a chat with them about the graduate route visa make sure they're educated on it um, and kind of get a bit of a commitment from them to to you know make sure that they're able to to hire international students a big thing for us is you know we have so many fantastic people coming here to, to study the last thing we want to do is lose them because you know they have all the skills but they're not able to stay here for whatever reason so it's something we're consistently doing to to educate our employer partners on you know the advantages and, and the benefits of hiring internationally and the fact that you know they shouldn't be put off they shouldn't see it as a risk they should see it as a you know a chance for investment in in the company's future so it's a really good question it's something we're we're continuously doing and and anything you know you have if you have any ideas on how we can keep educating our employers please do feel free to share them um yeah we've got a job around ux um this is a really interesting one actually because we put on some courses recently three skills connect about um yeah specifically looking at, at ux and we've heard from some companies that they're really keen to start hiring at the graduate level but it's interesting that you're saying you you haven't seen that kind of reflected in the job offers and the job roles yet um i know that and i know this because of a friend of mine um he recently and i say recently it was probably around this time last year um started a kind of graduate scheme with and digital um who took on kind of a, a cohort of about i think it was about 20 people put them through six weeks of training to kind of get them on you know on at, all at the the right level didn't require any background knowledge or experience of ux at all um and now he's really happy in a, in a role there so i would definitely recommend keeping an eye on and digital and hippo digital um as well similarly even if they've not got job roles on the website it would be worth getting a list together of all the ux um companies in the lead city region and just sending a, an email to them saying look do you think you'll have any graduate roles coming soon i'm really interested uh, are there any opportunities to kind of come shadow you guys or, or or speak to you guys you know about potentially coming to work with you guys like i've said throughout this it's a lot of this stuff is around networking and and the best way to get a job or to put yourself ahead of a job is if someone recognizes your name because they've had a conversation with you before or if you know you've expressed an interest in something before so i think one of the big takeaways from this session is people saying you know <clears throat> i don't have the right experience or i'm struggling to find experience i think my advice would be you know as much as you can get yourself out there now through conversations networking small work placements or internships then the better um i think you'd be really surprised at, at, at the power of networking like pretty much every job i've ever had has been because of a conversation i've had with someone either you know at the current job i'm working at or or at another organization and then recommending me apply for a role that they've got going so really would encourage you guys to to start building those networks and having those conversations as soon as possible um that's it for questions on the chat has anyone else got anything they want to ask at all at this point i'm gonna take the silence as a no uh Pfizer company you shared about ux okay so and digital put it in chat now Hippo digital are two of the ones that i'm aware of but i know there's some some other ones it it would also be worth if you're interested in ux looking at sky bet and gaming i know they make a lot of ux hires because of the the apps and the websites that they run so definitely worth keeping an eye on them um but yeah like i said quick google of, of ux companies in leeds should bring you up a pretty good list and i'd recommend making contact with them uh based on that cool okay cool well like i said these slides will get sent around to you guys afterwards um i'll try and sorry my computer's being a bit funny but i'll try and get a um a link to um our skills connect stuff in the chat before i go but um ikra tom i'm happy to, to hand over to you guys 
Um, I'd just like to do a quick reminder that this event is part of the In Leeds Week of Event, and it's a series of events um, based on the opportunities that are available in Leeds to graduates. Um, the full list of uh, events, the entire schedule, and to for sign up to other events that are happening this week, uh, we will be dropping the link in the chat. I'm just going to get that up. Also, I'm going to drop a quick link in the chat for a feedback back form that we have to for this session to know how you found it and um, how we can improve these sessions for the future and also to learn more about what you guys would like to see. Yep, I think. Yeah, Tom's popped the feedback form chat. Um, we have another question here from um, Varun, who's asked, do you think I should reapply for the course now since I have my graduate visa in hand? Yeah, I, Varun, I would say you definitely should inquire with the course, like, like put an inquiry through the website explaining the situation and um, speak to the people running the course because they'll be best placed to advise. I think having a graduate visa in hand is probably yeah that would probably put you in a in a better position than, than not having it confirmed um so i think I, I don't want to speak on their behalf but i can imagine that probably makes their process easier so i would definitely encourage you to to reapply or at least re-engage with them um on that the uh just to jump in on that the international student office will be able to help best with um how to approach this and we'll be able to best um, give you more information on how to go about this. Cool. Are there any more questions uh, that anyone would like to ask? Um, if not, I'd just like to ask a quick question then. Um, in terms of uh, networking, I'm bringing this up because I know this is something that um, a lot of graduates um, find to be a bit daunting um, and getting started with networking. Um, how would you say, um, would you have any tips or like advice on how um, to build up confidence for this? as taking the first kind of steps to reaching out people and um, getting to ask them questions and things that can be um, a bit scary for some, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like it's a bit of a daunting thing going up to like strangers and, and contacting strangers. I think just, just be aware that like people are, from my experience, usually really happy to have these conversations and, and the worst, especially online, like on LinkedIn, the worst they can do is just not reply to your message, which, you know, no, no loss to you if, if that happens. Um, from my experience, yeah, people are always really willing to help out and, and give kind of a few words of advice or, or encouragement. Um, everyone's been in this position before. Everyone's had to look for their first job at some point. So everyone knows what it's like. Um, so, you know, definitely bear that in mind and, and people are never really as, as scary as they seem um, before you've, you've spoken to them. Um, in terms of sessions, we're as a LEP putting on a session in probably going to be October time where we're looking at bringing in recent graduates and, and current students for a big networking session um, and we'll have more you know, information about that um, as the time draws nearer. But like I said, your university careers teams will have so much going on when it comes to employers on campus and meeting employers just like you know it's one of those annoying things where it, you only really get better at it through practice um so so practice as much as you can and 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 get in front of people as much as you can um yeah it it, it makes it a lot easier once you've you've got a few under your belt um are you on linkedin josh by the way yeah, I've just seen that question. I'll put my LinkedIn in, in the chat.
just to follow up from that also, um, I would just like to share that the Korea service will be, um, has a summer career coaching school. As part of that, we will be having some um, sessions which um, will allow graduates to practice uh, networking skills. So uh, just throwing that out there. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I would encourage everyone to, to take full advantage of that, definitely. Great. Um, well, yeah, if there's no further questions, I can see Tom has reminded everyone to fill in the feedback form. Yeah. So please do that on there. And yeah, thanks everyone for, for your questions in the chat as well. It's been really nice being able to speak to you and really nice having people kind of respond with, with questions. So I feel like that's always a good sign of, of an engaged audience. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please uh, fill, take uh, just a minute to fill out the feedback form to let us know how this event has gone and so that we can bring better events for you. And yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Thank you for coming.